the whole truth and nothing but the truth. If so, answer in the affirmative. Let the record reflect that the witnesses has answered in the affirmative. Affirmative. <clears throat> William K. Black is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, uh, Kansas City. An author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Of course, uh, we welcome you to the committee. Uh, Russell Roberts is a professor of economics at George Mason University and a research scholar at Stanford University Hoover Institution. Welcome. Your entire state minute will be placed in the record, and I'd like to ask you if you would assume in this, the time and what the clock does, it starts out, it's on green, then it goes to yellow, and then it turns red. So we'd like for you to do it within five minutes, and then we might have to stop you because the fact that we have votes on the floor, and uh, but we want to get as far as we can uh, before. So thank you very much, and why don't we start with you, uh, Mr. Roberts. Yeah, for, you can begin. You may want to pull it a little closer, too. Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Issa, and distinguished members of the committee. Americans are angry about executive compensation, rightfully so. The executives at General Motors and Chrysler don't deserve to make a lot of money. They made bad products that people didn't want to buy. The executives on Wall Street don't deserve to make a lot of money. They were reckless. They borrowed huge sums to make bets that didn't pay off, and they wasted trillions of dollars of precious capital, funneling it into housing instead of health innovation or high mileage cars or a thousand investments more productive than more and bigger houses. Everyday folks who are out of work through no fault of their own want to know why people who made bad decisions not only have a job, but a big salary to go with it. No wonder they're angry at Wall Street. But if we keep getting angry at Wall Street, we'll miss the real source of the problem. It's right here in Washington. We are what we do, not what we wish to be, not what we say we are, but what we do. And what we do here in Washington is rescue large companies, large financial institutions, and rich people from the consequences of their mistakes. When mistakes don't cost you anything, you do more of them. When your teenager drives drunk and wrecks the car, you keep giving him a do-over. Repairing the car and handing him back the keys is going to keep driving drunk. Washington keeps giving bad banks and Wall Street firms a do-over. Here are the keys. Keep driving. The story always ends with a crash. Capitalism is a profit and loss system. The profits encourage risk-taking. The losses encourage prudence. It is, is it a surprise that when the government takes the losses, instead of investors, that investing gets less prudent? If you always bail out lenders, is it surprising that firms can borrow enormous amounts of money living on the edge of insolvency? I'm mad at Wall Street, but I'm a lot madder at the people who gave them the keys to drive our economy off a cliff. I'm mad at the people who have taken hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money and given it to some of the richest people in human history. I'm mad at President Bush, President Obama, Secretary Paulson, Secretary Geithner, and Chairman Bernanke. And I'm mad at Congress. You helped risk takers continue to expect that the rules that apply to the rest of us don't apply to people with the right connections. You've saved the system, but it is not a system worth saving. It's not capitalism. It is crony capitalism. Using a special master for compensation to get our money back is too little too late. Many people argue that because the government handed out the money, the government has a right to dictate how it's spent. But in a constitutional democracy like ours, it's not the government that has rights. We, the people, have rights. The Constitution exists to restrain government, not to, empowerment, not to empower it. Whether government has the right to limit pay is not the question. The question is whether it's a good idea for the government to have the power to set compensation. And despite our anger, the answer is no. Hayek, the Nobel laureate economist, said, the curious task of economics is to demonstrate to men how little they really know about what they imagine they can design. The special master imagines he can design compensation packages that align incentives while retaining key talent, but it is impossible for any one person, no matter how wise, to anticipate the consequences of such decisions. 
nor does he have any incentive to acquire that knowledge. He has no skin in the game. A single individual has been given enormous arbitrary power with insufficient accountability or transparency. This is not good for the rule of law, democracy, or capitalism. By focusing on those who owe the government TARP money, the special master distracts us from other firms that benefited from government rescue, such as Gold Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase. The comfort we receive from seeing competition, compensation reduced distracts us from the policies that created the problem in the first place, the rescue of Wall Street from its own recklessness. It is a charade of political window dressing to make crony capitalism look respectable. I want my country back. Let's get the government out of the auto business, out of the banking business, out of the compensation design business. We need explicit timetables to disengage from government ownership, including a plan for how the Federal Reserve will draw down its balance sheet. Most of all, we need to stop trying to imagine we can design housing markets, mortgage markets, financial markets, and compensation. I want my country back. I want a country where responsibility still means something, where rich and poor, Main Street and Wall Street live by the same rules. We don't need a special master to level the playing field. We just need to take the crony out of crony capitalism so we can get back to the real thing. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very, very, very much. Uh, Professor Black. I join Russ in thanking you all for having us. Uh, making this opportunity. And I would certainly agree with him strongly that what we have is crony capitalism. But it isn't crony capitalism that occurs simply because of bailouts, and that's critical to understand. This same process occurred when creditors were wiped out, when subordinated debt holders were wiped out, when shareholders were wiped out. It happened when there were absolutely no bailouts in Enron, in WorldCom, in all of these circumstances, and it was the same mechanism, executive compensation, that drove those frauds. It is what is producing the crony capitalism. And you can stop the bailouts, and I think you should, but you're still going to have this problem unless you deal with pay. And you have to deal with not simply executive compensation, you have to deal with compensation more broadly. Let's look what happened. In the savings and loan crisis, there was an exhaustive investigation of what happened, and the National Commission found that in the typical large failure, fraud was invariably present, and that the means of the fraud was accounting fraud, and that the way you convert the firm assets to the benefit of the CEO is through modern compensation mechanisms. You saw that in abundance with Enron and WorldCom, the use of the rank and yank system to incent people to commit frauds. In other words, we have known for at least 35 years how to do incentives. And it came not from government, but from a very conservative libertarian, Michael Jensen who said, we're doing it all wrong, we need to change compensation, we need to go to much more aggressive performance-based pay. And he set out how you should do it. And what did Mr. Feinberg just report? That 35 years later, even after these disastrous failures, they couldn't get it right. That they designed systems and tried to run it past him, which obviously further misaligned the interests of shareholders from those of the managers. Right? So we need to stop that system. That is the system that has caused this crisis. Why did loan brokers bring in bad loans consistently? Because they were put on incentive systems based solely on volume and not on quality. Why did appraisers get inflated? It's because compensation created a Gresham's dynamic in which bad ethics drove good ethics out of the marketplace. And there are really good quantitative numbers on this. Professor Black, we're going to have to interrupt you. We have to run the vote, but we'll be back 10 minutes after the last vote, okay? So sure. we'll we just do a recess. And, uh
first one's 15. 